カイン君えー、急展開すぎるんですけどでもこれって絶対に断るの無理なパターンだよねどうしようプイえカイン様カイン君プイあわかりましたま、This episode of The Aristocrats Otherworldly Adventure was so, so good. Like, I was legitly laughing a lot this episode. It was entertaining, it had the wow factor. It was just so, so good. And it all ended with our boy Kane. Not only being claimed a baron, not only being given a mansion, not only being given platinum coins, not only being given a, like, a salary by the kingdom, he was also given the two daughters, one from the king and one from the duke, and my man is engaged now. This episode was off the chain, but the main thing and the main reason that episode three excelled over the last two episodes was really the laugh factor. Like, it was really so funny, and that's really what separated this episode. Like, I was dying from laughter this episode. And the main thing behind it is the two daughters, uh, the Duke's daughter, um, Silk, and the princess, Princess Telestia, they both totally weaseled and bamboozled Kane to the nth degree. The whole entire time, once they basically gazed upon our boy, they were smitten with him. No problem there. But they decided to push themselves close, hold on to him, grab him, hug him. They, you know, virtually everything but kiss him. Make sure that they he stayed with them. Spend the night with him for three nights. Cuddle to him. Wake up to him. They did all of these things. All of these things. And it... it Their, his actions caused both the king and the duke to go, you've tainted our our daughter. You've tainted our daughters. Nobody will want to marry them any, anymore. You need to take, take responsibility. He's like, what? What do you mean I got to take responsibility? Then, he, then he's offered their daughters in, in engagement. And he looks at the best scene of the episode by far is when Kane looks at his dad of like, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do here? And the dad goes, hmm. Like, he just he scoffs him up. He's like, yo, I'm out of this, bro. Like, oh, my God. I was dying from He's like, I can't, he can't even look to his dad for, like, advice on what to do. He's like, yo, you're, you're on your own, homie. You're on your own, homie. You make your own decisions now, Baron. <laughs> even his dad, too, he's like, oh, you know, you were just my third son. Apparently, you got the first title of all of them and everything. Anyways, this episode... Was just absolutely incredible. It was it was funny and it was just so entertaining. The inter the entertainment level of this episode was easily a ten for me. Now was it perfect by any means? No. Can you poke some holes in it? Yes. You know, is it a little fast and loose? Yes. Was it hilarious? Yes. And I think like the entertainment level of this episode was literally ten out of ten. Episode overall, you know, I'll give a solid 8 out of 10, you know what I mean? Because you can always begin to get really critical. So I'll say 8 out of 10, but entertainment value is off the hook. So the episode really had us starting off with uh, our boy Kane uh, casually. And I, I use the word casually a lot throughout my notes, but he casually does this. He casually does that. But he, he was casually uh, fighting a dragon. And when he fought the dragon, he defeated it. He earned two titles at the beginning of the episode. One was Enemy of All Monsters. Uh, and dragon killer and his magic not his not his level but his magic level was over 80 million which is like I, ha I don't even know what that is in comparison to the strongest person in the world but you have to assume it's pretty crazy uh, then we find out that he's heading to the royal capital this was this is two years after we left off last time so he's now 10 years old and I think his sister's a year or two years older than him I think she's 12. And he's going to go live in the royal capital with his sister. His sister's going to attend the academy. Uh, you, there's a, a, probably a, like an academy for like a royal academy or a, 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 an academy for magic. I'm assuming the royal academy based on everything I've gotten so far. But his sister's going to go there and she's going to attend the academy. She's going to, you know, her, her plan is to get to the number one spot. So when her brother's ready to come in, she's like, yo, this is my bro, you know, um, Her, you know, his little sister or his older sister is still smitten with him too, like obsessed 
Uh, and he's gonna go live there with the uh, you know at the royal capital until he comes of age. He's gonna go have his ten year old debut, I guess they call it, uh, you know, for his ten year old debut there. But then he's gonna be there for two years until he goes to the academy. He's gonna go live in, in the in the royal capital. Uh, he found out that there's like a, a you know some uh, as he's as he's going there, there's like some carriage being um, uh, what do you call it attacked by a bunch of I think they I think they were ogres. I think that's what they called them. A group of like fifty ogres and like a a, a boss ogre. But long story short, he goes, he saves them. It ends up being the duke's daughter and the princess. Uh, he uses an area heal spell again, very casually to heal everybody that was there. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to. He can't revive the dead, so he did put all the dead into his item box. They get to the royal capital after a lot of shenanigans and sleeping together. You know, him being forced to be in their carriage. You know, all this other stuff. Um, and he gets to the royal capital, and he's able to provide them the bodies and a good message of their bravery, and then he's summoned by the king. He gets the king's audience. The king gives him uh, the title of baron, gives him 10 platinum coins, and gives him a mansion, also a salary to maintain said mansion. Uh, and according to the king, it's you know, you can't have someone this talented and not give them, you know, uh, some kind of title and some kind of power within the kingdom because you, you don't want to lose somebody of his stature and what he brings to the table to anybody else. Nor do you want to be a kingdom that has somebody of this caliber and not acknowledge that, which is makes sense, you know, from a king's put, kinghood standpoint. Uh, then we have what we let what I started the video off on, which is him getting engaged to both of the girls because they're tainted. And essentially the reason that he's really being engaged to the girls is because, you know, he did decide to uh, give in to their vices. Uh, you know, that is part of it. But the main part is the two girls are absolutely in love and smitten with him. And the Duke and the King, both being fathers first and then Duke and King second, they realize that. So they're basically... Um, giving their daughters what they want which is which is king so now my boy stuck in the in the kingdom so overall really amazing episode really enjoyed it let me know what you think about this episode down in the comments below did you enjoy it as much as i did uh, i was expecting to have such a good time but i'm glad that i did but overall awesome episode really enjoyed it uh, make sure you guys check out uh, other videos that i'm posting uh throughout the spring season and of course as always i appreciate you guys being here we'll see you on the next video Peace.